Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the respiratory system. So we're going to be able to label the respiratory system and then we're going to focus on the alveoli or the air sacs, gas exchange and how the alveoli are adapted for efficient gas exchange. So let's get going. Here we've got the respiratory system. We're going to label it. So starting at the top here, this is the epiglottis, which is that kind of little flap that covers the trachea when you swallow food because obviously you don't want food going down the trachea the food needs to go down the esophagus into the stomach you don't want it to go down your trachea or windpipe so that little flap the epiglottis can cover the trachea to stop the food going down it and then we've got the larynx here also known as the voice box then we've got the windpipe itself the trachea which contains C-shaped rings of cartilage. Now, cartilage is obviously really strong and tough, but it's also flexible. So it allows the air to move down the trachea, but the cartilage makes sure that the trachea doesn't collapse. Um, it keeps it open, it holds it open so the air can move down into the lungs. Now, the trachea then branches into the two bronchi. And again, you can see on the diagram that the bronchi also contain these rings of cartilage. So again, it's giving them flexibility, but it's holding them open so the air can move into the right and left lung. Here you've got the ribs. Obviously, we're not showing the ribs going over the lungs, but you can see kind of the cut ends of the ribs. And I'm going to add an extra label because in between the ribs, we've got the intercostal muscles. And for A level, we're going to talk about two sets of intercostal muscles, the external on the outside and the internal intercostal muscles on the inside. This is obviously just a lung of which we have two. Now, the lungs, the lungs are surrounded by pleural membranes. And in between those pleural membranes, we have pleural fluid, which helps to kind of lubricate the lungs and protect the lungs as they move within the chest or within the thorax. Then, if we look inside the lung itself, we have got... The little air sacs, the little dead ends that look a bit like broccoli or cauliflower or trees or whatever you thought about a GCSE, they're called the alveoli. The finer tubes that branch and carry the air from the two bronchi into those air sacs are called the bronchioles. Now, larger bronchioles may contain cartilage, but the smaller bronchioles, they're so tiny, they don't contain cartilage. And then down at the bottom, we've got the diaphragm which is basically a sheet of muscle that is separating your thorax, your chest, from your abdomen and the organs below, like your stomach, your liver, your intestines. We've also got the heart here. Obviously, the heart is not part of the respiratory system because it's part of your circulatory system. But I'll label it because it is on the diagram. OK. Now, gas exchange itself occurs in the alveoli. So what we can see here, we can see many alveoli. We can see one of the smaller bronchioles carrying the air into those alveoli. And we can also see blood vessels, small blood vessels surrounding the alveoli. So you've obviously got arterioles um, carrying the blood in. Then you've got capillaries surrounding those alveoli and that's where gas exchange takes place so in terms of what we know from GCSE we should know that oxygen diffuses into the blood in the capillaries which are the microscopic blood vessels obviously oxygen is carried by red blood cells it associates with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin in the red blood cells meanwhile carbon dioxide is diffusing in the other direction. So it's moving from the blood, from the blood plasma, which is the liquid part of the blood. And it's diffusing across the wall of the capillary, across the epithelium of the alveoli, and it's going back into the alveolus so we can exhale and get rid of that CO2. This is called gaseous exchange because we're exchanging oxygen with CO2. And do remember that these gases are moving by simple diffusion, 
down their concentration gradients. But big question, how are the alveoli adapted for gas exchange? So there are many alveoli, like hundreds of millions in the lungs. I can't remember the number, but yeah, there's loads, like millions, millions of alveoli in the lungs. Many alveoli give a large surface area for faster gas exchange or a faster rate of gas exchange or a faster rate of diffusion. Number two, the alveoli epithelium is a single layer of flattened cells. Now at GCSE, you may have just said the wall of the alveolus is thin, but at A level, we should know that the wall of the alveolus consists of a single layer of what we call epithelium cells. They're actually called, I'll give you the word, because you might need it if you're OCR, they're actually called squamous epithelial cells. They're squash, they're flattened epithelial cells. And it is just a single layer. So this is obviously going to give a short diffusion pathway. So the oxygen doesn't have to travel far to get across the wall of the alveolus. The CO2 doesn't have to travel far in the opposite direction to get back into the alveolus because the wall of the alveolus is a single flattened layer of cells, the epithelial cells, the surface cells. That's what we call them. Right, let's see if we can get any more. We're not going to say, by the way, that the alveoli have a moist lining. Even though that may be true, it is not going to get you a mark on an A-level paper. So I'm going to ignore that. But what we can say is each alveolus is right next to a capillary. Or we can describe it as a dense network of capillaries in the lungs. So there's loads of capillaries all around the air sacs. So each alveolus is not far from a capillary. Again, the benefit of this is it gives us a short diffusion distance or a short diffusion pathway. So the oxygen does not have to travel far to get from the alveolus into the blood because the capillary is right there. And the CO2 does not have to travel far to get from the blood into the alveolus because there's such a dense network of capillaries surrounding all of the alveoli. On top of this, let's think about maintenance of a concentration gradient. So the alveoli are continuously ventilated or you could just say the lungs are continuously ventilated what i mean by that is we are continuously bringing air into our lungs and into our alveoli and that air will have a higher concentration of oxygen than the concentration of oxygen in the blood so let's finish this off the alveoli are continuously ventilated and filled with air with a higher concentration of oxygen. And equally, the blood in the capillary is continuously circulating. So blood with higher O2 concentration is replaced with blood with a lower oxygen concentration. So all of this, this kind of constant ventilation or continuous ventilation, bringing in air with a higher concentration, and then the continuous flow of blood or circulation of blood, moving the blood away once it's been oxygenated and replacing it with blood with a lower concent concentration of oxygen. Both of these things we're gonna link to maintaining a concentration gradient, which is just a difference in concentration. 
maintaining a concentration gradient for oxygen. So oxygen will continue to diffuse from the alveolus into the blood because there's always going to be a higher concentration of oxygen in the air in the alveolus than in the blood next to it in the capillary. Now, the same could be said for CO2, right? There's always going to be a higher concentration of CO2 in the blood in the capillary and a lower concentration of CO2 in the air in the alveolus. So CO2 will continuously diffuse from the blood into the alveolus down its concentration gradient. So you're maintaining that concentration gradient through constant ventilation and the continuous circulation of blood. Um, now, this question was just about the alveoli, but I think I should also mention the wall of the capillary, because not only do these gases have to cross the epithelium of the alveolus, they do also have to cross the wall of the capillary to actually get in or out of the blood. So the capillary wall, which is here, is called the endothelium and again this is a single layer of flattened cells in fact it's another single layer of squamous epithelial cells that form the endothelium the wall of the capillary we've got another thin layer, a single layer of cells. So the gases only have to cross the single layer of cells forming the epithelium of the alveolus and then another single layer of flattened cells forming the endothelium of the capillary, short diffusion pathway, key adaptation for any exchange surface. Right, let's have a look at a couple of questions together. Describe and explain one feature of the alveolar epithelium that makes the epithelium well adapted as a surface for gas exchange. Do not refer to surface area or moisture. They're telling you, don't just say alveoli have a large surface area. Don't say that they're moist. We've got to give one feature of specifically the alveolar epithelium, the wall of the alveolus, the surface of the alveolus. So what we can say is the epithelium is a single layer of cells or we can say it's made from flattened cells or you could say both it's a single layer of flattened cells literally looks like this if i do you a kind of picture yeah it's a single layer of squamous epithelial cells um, and we need to explain why that is a benefit so we're going to say it reduces the diffusion distance or you can say it reduces the diffusion pathway okay but we're specifically answering the question which was one feature of the epithelium itself so this is really all we can say it's a single layer of cells or they are flattened or squamous cells which gives a short diffusion pathway. Describe the pathway taken by an oxygen molecule from an alveolus into the blood. Now you'll notice this is two marks and this is because it has to cross two layers, if you like. So oxygen moves across the alveolar epithelium, which is what I've drawn here that flattened single layer of cells forming what we call the epithelium, the wall of the alveolus. And then oxygen moves across the endothelium of the capillary. Now we call it the endothelium because it's a tube, it's a blood vessel, but you can get the mark if you said the epithelium of the capillary. That would be okay because it's still a surface layer of cells. It's still, you know, a single layer of flattened cells. You can call it the epithelium of the capillary. But specifically when we're talking about a blood vessel, we would refer to it as the endothelium. Now, it's got to be in this order as well because it is talking about oxygen and oxygen will move from the air sac into the blood. So it will first go across the epithelium of the alveolus and then it will cross 
the endothelium of the capillary. So correct sequence, both of those marks, you're going to get two. Guys, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Um, I was going to talk about ventilation on this video as well, but I've decided not to. We're going to do a big video on ventilation, so inhaling and exhaling, over on TikTok. So make sure to check that one out as well so you can learn the mechanisms involved in ventilation.